Hello. Welcome to Digital Photography 101. If you want to learn how to be a good photographer or a better photographer, you've come to the right place. I've been a professional photographer for over 40 years, shooting on film most of those years. I love photography. I love my job and what I do. I look forward to it every day, especially when you're shooting on the sidelines at a college or professional football game or a major league baseball game or even a basketball game. When we were shooting on film in those days, you really have to know what you were doing or you'd miss the shot. We didn't have the luxury of taking a photograph and checking it out on the back of the LCD monitor like some people do today and make corrections. You really had to know the basic principles of photography to be a good photographer. When I was shooting products for clients in architectural and interiors, I was shooting on this 4x5 view camera. When I was shooting portraits and weddings, I was shooting on the RB67 two and a quarter by two and three quarter format film camera. I was shooting uh, sports for inside sports magazines with my Nikon F3 and F4 cameras. So when I decided to go digital, I stayed with Nikon because my expensive lenses, these telephoto and normal lenses, would fit the Nikon digital cameras. Digital photography has really changed the world of photography today. Unfortunately, it has turned a lot of beginners and amateur photographers into thinking they are professional photographers. Digital cameras are like a small computer. They have menu settings and submenu settings, such as a setup menu, a shooting menu, a playback menu, and a custom menu, and, all the, and this depends, of course, on your camera. I recommend that you read your manual and get used to your camera and where all the settings and features are. Before you shoot the first photos, there are three settings, in my opinion, that are most important. They are the ISO setting, the white balance setting, and the quality settings. These three settings has a direct effect on any photos you shoot, so you should get to know and how to use them. When shooting outside in direct sunlight or any outside light, you want your ISO setting to be at the lowest setting, such as 100 or 200, depending on your camera. If you're going to be shooting inside of a building, you want to be able to raise that ISO setting to a higher number, such as 400 or 800, so you can shoot pictures and handhold your camera. Also, the white balance setting should be set for the appropriate light situation in which you were shooting, whether it's outside or inside. So if you're shooting outside, of course, you want the white balance setting to be set on daylight. And if you're shooting inside, you want it to be set on either tungsten, if that's the light source, or fluorescent, if that's the light source, or you can select auto, which most cameras give a pretty good, decent setting shooting inside on auto. Depending on what kind of camera you have, the quality settings is also very important. On the more expensive cameras, you have a raw setting, which is a large compressed file, and you have TIFF settings, which is also large file and not compressed. You also have JPEG settings. JPEG settings are three sizes there too. You have the fine setting, the normal setting, and the basic setting. Of course, if you're going to shoot JPEGs, I recommend you shoot on fine. Now, since you're also going to be shooting on memory cards, the higher the quality of the quality setting that you've chosen will depend on how many pictures you can shoot on your card and what size the card is. You'll be able to shoot more pictures on the JPEG setting because it's a smaller file. So if you want to shoot raw, you won't be able to shoot as many set, um, to shoot as many photos, either raw or TIFF files. As I mentioned earlier, I've been a professional photographer for over 40 years. And during those years, when I had the time, I taught photography and video production at several colleges and universities in their continuing education divisions. My students asked me a number of questions what I always tried to answer. 
What kind of camera should I buy? What kind of lens? What's f-stop? How do you get the right color balance? I mean, just numerous questions. Even after my classes, I had people over the years ask me different questions on photography. So one day, it just dawned on me, I, I got the experience and know-how. I have a video production editing system, cameras and everything that I need. So I decided to produce this high definition video presentation called Digital Photography or Basic Photography 101 that explains, illustrates, and teaches the basic principles of photography, which are exposure, learning how the aperture f-stop, uh, is the lens opening, works with the shutter speed to give you a properly exposed photograph, and the result of that photograph will to give you whether it's a shallow depth of field or a deep depth of field. Also, the video covers composition, the art of composing a photo in the viewfinder. This video also covers numerous other subjects. It explains the Sunny 16 rule. If you don't know what the Sunny 16 rule is, you really do need to get my video if you want to be a good photographer. The video also covers various other subjects such as shooting portraits outside using whether using lighting, the existing light, fill light, or reflected light. Here is a small segment from this video. When shooting outdoor informal portraits, composition and depth of field play an important role, as well as the quality of the light. The quality of the light depends on the time of day, the location, and the placement of your subjects. Midday sun high above is flat lighting and creates ugly shadows. In this situation, I use fill flash to fill in the shadows. In late afternoons or mornings, I place my subjects with their backs to the sun, so the sun is not in their eyes causing them to squint. Also with the late afternoon or morning sun at their backs, the sun highlights the hair and shoulders, separating them from the background. Here is where depth of field is important. A longer focal length lens opened up with fast shutter speeds creates a shallower depth of field, throwing the background out of focus, making your subject stand out from the background. Since the subject's faces are in shade, you have the option of opening up the lens for metering in the shaded areas, or using a bounce reflector, or using fill flash. Sometimes it depends upon the subject matter, whether it's a small group or large group. Camera distance from the subject. This video presentation will teach you more in 45 minutes than you can learn in a year taking a photo class. And you probably would need to watch this video several times to get to absorb all the information in the video. You have three options on getting the video. The Blu-ray version is only $29.99. The standard definition DVD version is only $24.99. Or you can download the video for only $19.99. Go to my website at csphotovideo.com or click on the link below or click on shop at the top of my website. Free shipping in the United States. I assure you, if you get this video, you will be glad you did because you will learn more about photography and understand the basic principle of photography that every photographer should know. A creative photographer sees the image up here before he sees the image in the viewfinder. When you know and understand the basic principles of photography, you can create that image in the camera. I hope you like my presentation and subscribe to my channel for more tips and more videos on photography. And hope you love photography as much as I do. Keep practicing, keep shooting, and good luck. Thank you.